So, hi everyone, um, welcome to Resonate Online 2020. Um, I'm Holly, I'm the Digital Event Coordinator, so if you've got any questions, just ask me. Um, this is a modern guide to songwriting, it's our first session, and uh, I really want you to use the chat box on the right hand side, uh, just ask anything, anything you want and I'll come on 10 minutes before the end and get your questions answered. And without further ado, I'll hand over to Michelle who is leading this discussion very badly good morning everybody how are we all doing Michelle and i am super excited to be speaking to these wonderful songwriters producers um i know victoria horn but i do not know rhiannon and i do not know sky i've seen you sky at, um where have i seen you i have seen you at oh what's that phrase differently in the studio oh, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. kind of popped my head in and gone oh, yeah. but oh, I, I can't say that i know you how are you doing i'm good thank you when was this when when, when oh, did you... God, this would have been a while ago i would have been working with will oh nice yeah the will nice. would be crazy will crazy will yeah probably mm -hmm. with will and nabia would have been the last time i would have been there Oh wow! I remember because you guys had a track and we came into your room. <laughs> We're like, "What's this?" Oh, but, um, yeah. yeah, that was that was some time ago. So, hope you guys are doing well. Yeah, we um, do. I have a slight technical issue because there's something that I cannot find, so I cannot give everybody an amazing intro that I wanted to give everybody um, because I can't find the email. So, um. What we'll do, we will introduce ourselves. I want to start with Victoria because I know Victoria has got the vibes. Yeah, right. Victoria, can I ask you to introduce yourself, please? Absolutely. So my name is Victoria Warren, but my pen name is Lady V. I'm a Grammy song winning writing writer in two Heavy Rotation Awards. I've had about 16 dance number ones during my time. And um, I'm on the songwriter committee for the Ivers Academy and the new board member of the F list, which is the female oh, list, which is really nice. Yeah, just started, so I'm super excited about that. Um, I work in all genres of music and I work with people like Dr. Dre and Eminem, Brandy, Keisha Cole, Demi Lovato, Selena Gomez, um, from DJs. I've just worked with Fetty Legrand, um, and Io, sadly, who we just passed away um i'm sorry i'm not meant to love it's a nervous thing because it's bad um so yeah that's what i do and i also do media music i've just moved into media um but i'll tell you more about that in a little bit cool Hi, adams i know i can say something about you hit producer mm -hmm. kylie minogue i love your doja cat song by the world way yeah okay. i'll let you take do the rest yeah. of that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to do the whole thing. I was just like, wow, you got, I don't even need, need to do it myself. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sky Adams. I'm a producer, songwriter, worked on Doja Cat, Boss Bitch uh, for the Harley Quinn movie recently. I've uh, done Kylie Minogue and many others. Uh, I work in pretty much all genres of music. Well, majority of the genres. And um, yeah, that's that's about it. Right? Oh, I'm just here to have a good like time. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Um, my name's uh, Rihanna Meyer, and um, I'm a producer, songwriter, uh, engineer. Um, I'm currently on the executive uh, board of directors for the Music Producers Guild, and I also um, uh, co-own and run a boutique publishing uh, music publishing company called Palm Bay Music. Nice. My name is Michelle Escoffrey. I am a singer songwriter, been involved in the music industry for far too long, far, far longer than I want to admit. <laughs> um, I sit on the board of directors for, oh, no, let me correct that. I sit on the members council now um, for PRS for Music because we've changed it through governance. And I sit on the board of trustees for PRS Foundation. And um, I teach postgraduate for Talyard Education and Commercial Songwriting and own a small boutique um, production label with my husband called Five to Eight Music Global, where we make music that we just love and just put it out. So, and oh, yeah, you know what? Oh, so, we can, so we can kick this off like this, right? So, 
Yes, I forgot about that. So I lead I lead a gospel choir in in um, South East London as part of a bigger choir called Singology. Um, I'm I'm the vocal leader for that. But this year we haven't been able to meet because of the dreaded COVID-19. So we're getting used to this whole new landscape, which I have, I have to admit, I haven't done very well at. Um, so singing on Zoom is, yeah. yeah. It's a nightmare. Do you, you I record your vocals? My husband records my vocals, but. Okay, yeah. Well, that's the thing a lot of writers are having to start to learn to record your own vocals. I'm lazy. <laughs> Which is good. I don't like to do it. When you've got like 30 yeah, people on Zoom all trying to sing at the same time, it, yes, it, do, right. it doesn't work very well. Everybody's on mute, one person singing, and like you can't actually catch the energy. So let me ask you, what are your, what are your writing practices pre-COVID? Any of you can uh, answer. Me. What were your writing practices pre COVID? Like, what do you, what do you mean by writing practices? Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, it depends. Like, most of the time, as a producer, you have to kind of like command the room. Like, you learn it along the way. That's one thing I learned over the years. Because back in the days, obviously, starting out, I was kind of just like, I mean, it's like a 50 50. So if you don't command the room and you just let everybody do a free run, a lot of the times you won't get the results that you're looking for. But if you're brave enough to like say, you know what, I don't think that's working. I don't think that's working. Start again. Sometimes I start like three times. Depends, you know. And um, so yeah, it's just being able to be confident and just like make sure like the outcome of the song is every time it's good. That's what you want. Because at the end of the day, when People leave your studio and then yeah. you have to send the demo in. A lot of the time, the responsibility lies on you because they say, who are you <laughs> with? Sky Adams. <laughs> and if it's crap, then, you know, yeah. that's and your how reputation. Often, how yes. often would you be writing, Sky? Would that be every day? I, I, used, I used to do every day. I used to do twice a day. I did it all, like, you know, back in the days. Nowadays, I kind of I narrow it down to, like, three times a week to do writing and then like I leave two days for um, finishing tracks or just like yeah to do whatever okay. I need to do. Mm. Yeah. Victoria, you was about to say something. Yeah, I was gonna say how mine has changed, but I actually think it's really good the way no, it's but changed. Before, before so, you say how it's changed, what what was it before? Yeah, I used to go up to London five days a week and pretty much be leaving at the house at like 9.30 to get to my sessions because I live in the countryside. Which I like for the weekends mm. and this and, and obviously for those of you who don't know I've only been back in England five years so I lived in LA for 13 so I did I used to go to London five days a week and then I'd be home at like 10 11 o'clock every mm. night no social life no nothing just like on my grind constantly and you know this changed everything it, a lot of things on a lot of levels first of all I was already dabbling in producing a uh, vocal producing I've become really good at it. Like, I'm serious. I'm quite proud of myself. And we have to credit ourselves in this business because, trust me, not many other people will. You know what I mean? We have to. It's like, Michelle, when you did that video, you learned how to do videos in lockdown. And you did an incredible oh. job. I was blown away. You know? So I think what it's done is it's made us rethink how we're working. So basically, I'm at home yeah. more. I, I come here now I have artists coming to my house but the best thing that it's opened up because everybody was just zooming anyway around yeah. the world it opened me back working up with my American producers so I mainly am working back with the people that I used to work with five years ago and they're just sending me stuff or I'm doing zoom sessions um and and obviously vocal producing up and then sending it back mm. to them like Sky said before you guys uh, came on, it, you know, the problem is with Zoom is the energy. The energy, it's not there. You've got playback issues. Even if you're using software and you're, you're sharing scre screens, you know, it, it isn't the best scenario. It really is tricky. But 
You I said this guy, and I love this. You have to create the energy in your head. Mm-hmm. That. Mm-hmm. That's right. me, anyway. Rhiannon? Yeah. yeah. Pre COVID. So pre COVID, um, back when you could actually, you know, it was safe to be in a room with people. I kind of miss miss those days. Um, yeah, I mean, a writing session would always start with, you know, a tea and a chat. Um, and usually like just a really long chat. Um, it, it's a weird thing when you get in a room with someone you've never met and like all of a sudden you're trying to draw out kind of their whole life story. You know, it, it can be it can be quite a uh, weird, sometimes, you know, just really um, abnormal kind of uh, kind of environment. So I guess, you know, I've always felt like it's my job just to make, you know, the artists just feel like as comfortable as possible and just to get to know them and you know I've always approached any session first and foremost with like um you know if we write a song great and if we don't we just end up just chatting and then becoming mates and maybe we we just try again another time then that's then that's great too and I, I feel that's especially important because you know when you're working with writers you know and they're just going in and out of sessions you know and they're just writing all the time especially when you're writing all the time as well like you know I, I don't know I, I'm, I'm always like especially aware of that and just kind of try to gauge what the vibe is but you know aside from that I also try and you know be as prepared as possible for sessions so you know I might you know like listen to what the artists kind of been doing what they've kind of either previously released or maybe any demos I've been working on and um, you know try and have something kind of like you know maybe like an idea ready whether that be like a cool loop or maybe like a chord progression or just something maybe just to kick off the session if the artist has maybe come in and they're like well, I've got no idea you know so just yeah. just something to just to kind of maybe you know spark an initial you know bit of creativity so that's how I always kind of approach you know or used to approach a session pre-covid yeah yeah <laughs> so um Sky you talked about the vibe having the vibe in the room and not necessarily mm. struggling with that on say a digital platform how do you navigate that yeah um i think it's more about just adapting to a situation like for instance i think one of the main problems when we first started the whole zoom thing in the pandemic was the delay so like usually when you're in the room with somebody and you play something and they- They'll sing an idea like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. But then you got the delay. So on the other end, totally out of time. And you're trying to like listen, like, what is it really singing? I can't hear you. You know what I'm saying? Then we figure out, okay, you know what? So I started doing this thing where I'll do a loop and I'll send it to everybody. So if you had an idea, stop the session and play the loop on your end and then sing it over. That's how we used to like try to like, you know, new ways of communicating. And then it's just like, yeah, um, it was just adapting to like everything else, like with uh, be, not being in the room is like like I said, it's a difficult thing because then you have to kind of just create the vibe yeah. somehow, somewhere. Yeah. It's it's different. Yeah. It's not the same. Oh, but you, you know, audio movers. Oh yeah, yeah. I use some um, thing called loopback. Loop back. Okay. So it's like, yeah, loopback. So um, unlike on audio yeah. movers, you just um, you put program. You know, have you used it before? We are use audio movers. That's what we've been using. Oh yeah, yeah. A lot. Everyone is either audio movers or like. Um, so loopback is kind of like you can connect everything to it, like your logic, your um, what's it called, your YouTube, your Spotify. So for anything I play, it would just you you would hear on the other okay. end. Okay. It's, it's, it's constantly yeah. streaming, so it's never ending. So. Okay. And, um, yeah. What, what about what about the rest of you guys? How are you creating the vibe in the room in the, on a digital platform? Bring in the laughter and the fun. I think you just got to come with a cup of tea or whatever and just pretend somehow in your imaginary world that you're kind of in the room with people. I think it does help though. And Sky, you and you probably testified to this. I think if you work with people that you've worked with before, it makes mm. it a little easier. Mm. But I think mm. I, I haven't actually done a complete stranger Zoom mm. session. Has anyone done mm. that? I haven't done that. Oh yeah, yeah. Really? weird and awkward. Oh, I, 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 kind of... What's the weirdest <laughs> yeah. thing about working with a complete stranger over over Zoom? It because a lot of times, you know, when you meet somebody, it's like speed yeah. dating. You kind of got to break the ice, you know, like what makes them laugh and this and that. And when you're trying to like certain people, especially like if certain people like English is not the first language, I've had yeah. a couple of those sessions, and 
like, eh, you know, eh, I tried to, I can't hear what you play, you know, and I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> so I'm there trying to, like, work it out, and I'm trying to bust some jokes, and right. they just don't get it. I'm like, oh. And it's just like, yeah. We had not touched on this a little while ago, and this is the truth, and we yeah. all know this. You, I mean, the weirdest thing about our sessions is we get in a room, and, and for the people listening, I'm sure they've experienced it as well. We sit in the room with complete strangers sometimes over a cup of tea or a coffee, and we start revealing our innermost secret, secrets instantly. Right, sometimes, you know? And it's mm. <laughs> therapy. And we start. I just did a session with um, Billy Lockett, who's an incredible artist. Mm -hmm. And we, I had an issue with. I, a family member I did I had a really serious thing going on and he had a, had, had a similar sort of thing and then we ended up writing about mm. these people in this mm. sort of most weirdest session it was like it was so it's probably one of the most realist sessions that I've ever done in my life yeah. it was mm. do you know what I mean and that's what happens you meet these people for the first time and you sometimes do these songs that are so like part of you pieces yeah. of who we are and then other times we just write, yeah. you know, for fun. Well, we've, got, we've got a question. We've got a question that's come in. It says from Shannon Mulgrew. Shannon says, "What is your recording processes like? Is there a particular order to your sessions, like guitar or piano melodies first, and then go from there, or vocals last, or is it random? Also, do you believe that lyrics are important? So, first one, what's your recording process like?" Uh, uh, mine's random. It doesn't matter wherever the okay. vibe comes from. So like, you just start anyway, um, right? Okay, anyway, Rhiannon. Yeah, I, I kind of yeah would agree with Sky. I think it really just depends on what like what the song you know is about, what it needs. Like just I don't know. It just it varies from from track to track. Um, but in terms of like um lyrics, um, like I I think lyrics are hugely important. It's, it's something actually I used to Very like important. overlook quite a bit when I first kind of started dabbling in, in production and like mm. writing. Um, but I think the more I've kind of gone into writing um, and working as a songwriter, kind of going back into production, the more I've kind of like, I don't know, like really, really kind of thought like my production based on like, you know, lyrically what's happening, you know, and like, you know, should the production kind of mirror what's happening in the song, you know, and so yeah, but it's also how like people connect, you know, like people, people will hear a song with like lyrics that will just kind of like touch them in some way and they'll be like, whoa, yeah, like I can totally relate. And that's how people connect with music, that's how people connect. Mm. So yes, yeah, it's, it's really important in my Lyrics definitely. I mean, like if you tell, if you say like the most iconic songs like in the world, songs that you can always certain songs like Adele songs or like you know what's his name, uh, Ed Sheeran or something. You know what I'm saying? He knows lyrically how to like make magic. You know, so when you listen to it, it can take you back to a time in your life when you're like, man, I remember when I was struggling. This song helped me get through my relationship at that time. You know because so lyrics are like if not the most i would say up there that's the most important thing but depends you know what, what, I would what, say, what so chat, kind of, you know about that sorry sometimes by the way the sound goes in and out so it's hard sometimes my signal's not that great here um i would say with shadow and asking that question you know what you need to really think about it and evaluate it each session yeah. that you do because the recording process will change to who you're working with and lyrics will change to what session you're doing. If you're doing a song that's got la, 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 and you're, what you want to do, a very whimsical dance song that's very kind of, or, or that's a very sort of throwaway sort of pop song, which a lot of songs are yeah. now, they are, yeah. it, in those moments you won't need to be maybe being quite so focused on the lyric I think you should always try and do the best lyric that you can anyway. But also, when you're thinking about, are oh, you going to start with the guitar or piano? Sometimes doing that to get a beat song mm -hmm. is not going to help you. So if you've got an artist that wants that kind of song, you could be going, taking yourself down the wrong road, mm -hmm. the wrong rabbit hole. So I think definitely um, sum it up per mm -hmm. scenario. Um, yeah. With regards to lyrics, I think there are simple things that you can learn. Um, especially with the art of songwriting. I think, like, try not to repeat words. Um, 
And also try not to go for obvious rhymes. Try and find loose rhymes or something that's a little interesting. And also, finally, I think know what the current trends are. So right now, we've almost got this kind of poetical um, poetry, but with conversational mm, yeah. lyric. So I, we're not going very flowery. Oh, little winds, the stars, mm -hmm. leaves were falling and I saw you. Yeah. You know, it's not like that. It's not like that anymore. It's kind of yeah, like, like real talk. Yeah, but with bits of imagery thrown in and not too much, not too many analogies, because there was an era maybe yeah. eight years ago where analogies were few. Would, would you agree, Sky? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Just little touches mm, yeah. of analogies, I yeah. think. Concepts. Concept is king. Great title. Concept is king. Yeah. Concept, yeah. Con concept and is melody. King. You know, you, you're never. Yeah. You're yeah. Never, yeah. Never, yeah. Never, yeah. Never, yeah. Never, it always starts. Yeah. Always starts with the melody. Yeah. Like, then lyrics come afterwards. I mean, some people do it the other way around, which I find really weird. But um, going back to what you said, um, you pretty much hit, hit the nail on the head, um, Lady V. With um, the depends what song it is and depends yeah. what artist you're writing for. Yeah, the lyrics, lyrics matter. So if it's um, yeah, yeah, yeah no, that was pretty much okay. it. Okay. Um, how do you come up? Do you want to get into melodies as well? Do you want to get into melodies? Do you want to? Do you want to touch? Oh yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We, we can touch on melody. Melodies. I was just looking at the other question because I'm, I'm aware. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the time and making sure that all the questions are answered. Oh. Mel you know, for me already, V, melody is king, and melody, melody runs through everything. It runs through the music. What I find, what I find with new, new songwriters, a lot of my students, um, they don't place the importance of how important the melody in the music is um, and we we do something in our course with um, a pop quiz where literally you have to guess the song within like the intro and then you really get to understand how important that melody is and what those little things that become hooks and as soon as you hear it you know what song it is or then yeah. Hooks as well, Michelle. Have you not noticed that that when you go back yeah. in those old tracks, the music is yeah, way so more. more. The, I the old music I can sing the, the guitar parts, yeah. the brass parts, the keyboard yeah. lines. Yeah. And I can't do that so much now in today's music, which I, I feel sad. Elements of it in today's mm. music, but it's not as prevalent as it was. Um, when you when you go back in yeah. time and listen to the songs, you know, two decades ago or whenever. You can you can hear you know that guitar riff or that bass line that comes in and you're like I know what song this is instantly. Um, Quincy, and, Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In terms of like yeah. the way his melodies always counted each melody, but like his bass yeah. line, everything was yeah. always memorable. Like from you know to yeah. that. Dun, da 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 Ba, 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 yeah. 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 We can, and that's another good point that actually, Sky, you bringing him up is a good point to make. We mm -hmm. can learn mm -hmm. so much from people in the past. Oh, John, yeah. and from now, I think it's really good to listen to what's going on now if you want yeah. to be a current pop writer. But mm -hmm. it's really, really, really important mm -hmm. to listen to the past. And oh, if no, it's that's, that's, I would love to share something just very quickly. I had, and I hope this will inspire everybody watching as well. So I've had some absolutely freaking amazing news this morning. A year ago, and this, this I hope will give you the inspiration and dreams to know that you should never stop, no matter what age you are, just keep believing. So a year ago, my brother, who's like a brother to me, Joe Killington, who I write with every week, and my friend Mark Silvan, we decided to make a band for fun, just for fun, a sync project called The Candy Skulls. And we decided to do 60s, 70s music. It was like the Fleetwood Mac meets the B-52s meets Hey Y'all and, um, and then Fifth, fifth, um, is it fifth Dimension, Age of Aquarius, like with loads of harmonies, like completely going against the grain of everything that is happening now in the current market, basically. And we have just got huge sync. It was signed off on it for oh, HBO. Really? For yeah. 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 As well. 
And I'm in my 40s. I'm proud to admit that. And it just shows that you should never, ever stop dreaming. And as well as chasing modern music, you should at some point go, I'm going to do what I yeah. want to do for the fun of it. Mm. I'm going to make yeah. music and remember yeah. why we started this for fun. Yeah. No, 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 I, I think, I think yeah. you made a really oh, good point God. because I think some sometimes you can kind of get caught up too much in trends and be like, oh, you know, but I kind of want to like write something that's going to kind of be like on trend and because, you know, you want it to be successful or, you know, you. Can, I think sometimes you can think too much with like a little bit of an A&R hat on. And actually, I think you're right. I think just sometimes I think you forget just to write music because it's fun. Like, just, just to have a bit of fun with it. And I, I, I think that's really important, actually. Going back to, going back to what you said about, about going back to the roots is very, very important. I'm, and, and another thing, yeah, about following trends, it's easy to like, you know, be like, oh, I'm only doing modern stuff and following what everybody else is doing. But then you have like the biggest, like, you know, the most genius guys, they know their roots. They know like, you know, the background where like electronic music started from like craft work. And you know what I'm saying? They have done all that, their homework. And they know how, here's the thing, music hasn't really changed over the last 20 years. Yeah. They just keep reinventing it, the same thing. So that's all the guys do. They just reach into the glove compartment, into like the box where we got here. Let me just go <laughs> and just really, let me break that back. You know that's what I'm saying? That's what makes it fresh. So, <laughs> That's what music is. And young people, young people listen to it. Young people listen. Oh, this is fresh. This is new. And the, the people who know, they're like, "Oh, that's just <laughs> yeah, that's this." <laughs> yeah, you're true. clever. Very, I see what he did. Okay, we have a question from Martha. Does the panel have any suggestions for exercises or tips when things aren't going well in the writing room or the Zoom room? Mm. Oh, walk. Go, go. Writer's book. Uh, <laughs> honesty is the best policy honesty is the best if something if, if the if you hit a wall and it's just not the vibe isn't right or the it's just not happening be honest say it move on to something else mm. you know it, it's in instead of wasting time trying to like flog that dead horse and it ain't happening you know what this isn't the right vibe let's move on to something else and then if that's still not happening Let's go and eat some food. Let's have a food. Yeah. Oh, Michelle, got to record that idea though. That rubbish idea, you must record because it might just be. Yeah, I yeah, know. Listen, check this out. No, because sometimes another That's song. I do it. believe this wants to be written. Like something in the. I don't know. I'm going to sound like a hippie here. Like wants another song. There's something in the universe. So I've had this where I've been going. Ah, no, I don't feel this. Ah, da da da. And I've put just the scratch vocal down of that one section that we've had, and we've come back to it, and then I've ended up getting yeah. another song cut, not that. the other one. I hear that. Just put the back to what if you what if you haven't the, even got to that stage? If you haven't even got to the stage where you have scratch vocals, well, you're right. You should. I 100% agree, though, you should move on. Even even if you don't finish that one, but you should have a, just a little right. template of whatever you've done. And but I agree, call yeah. the song. I'd move say, on, be brave. like, leave, leave, leave a room, no. like, get out of the room that you're writing in. Just go somewhere. Yeah. Like, so look, yeah. what, what you said, Michelle, like, go get some food. Like, I live by the sea, so I often, like, you know, if there's a bit, bit of a vibe, I just said, oh, let's go for a walk. Maybe, like, you know, go to the pub, just, like, just whatever, just whatever you need to do. Um, but actually, in terms of tips, like I, um, I, uh, I kind of um, learned quite a cool tip actually, uh, not that long ago, um, when it comes to like writing lyrics. And an artist kind of introduced me to something that they called like the line of no judgment, and I've used it ever since. And oh. um, and I, I've just found it really, really helpful. Basically, like you know, whether you're in Zoom or you're an in-person session, you get your Google Doc up, and you know, however you kind of share lyrics, or if you work in Logic, you know, use a kind of the notes tab. But like, um, just to put a line across the, the document, and you know, just everything. <laughs> You know, you know when you kind of think of lyrics, like you know, you all have those moments where you're like, oh, I can't say that. That's just really cheesy. Or, oh no, can I say that? But the whole purpose of a line and a judgment is like, no, you just get all that stuff out. It's a safe space because yeah. it goes underneath the line. So you can put anything underneath the line. It doesn't matter. But just by getting out that stuff, the generic stuff, the stuff you kind of don't want to say. 
but when you do say it sometimes something maybe just kind of comes above the line and then what goes yeah. above and it says it was such a such a great idea and uh, and i've used it ever since and and i i really love it um so yeah just a tip for anyone that's kind of struggling to get kind of ideas out lyrically it can kind of feel like, yeah, like a bit more of a creative fun way though as well don't you think like having i mean there are times when we're not in sessions have a book have lists mm. i have lists and lists and lists and lists of titles and i have them in different sub genres different names they're all titles i've got hundreds of them on my laptop so the minute i get into a room normally i end up normally most of the time a lot of my my titles get taken so what I will do is I will have everything. And when I'm sitting, talking, judging up the situation when we're doing that cup of tea or coffee, mm -hmm. I pick five out, just five. And then I'm like, thing. And then you also have a page of what I call your A gold titles. Those ones that you know are so excellent. I think keep those back and don't bring those out until you yeah. know you've got a song worthy of that. Uh, you know what I mean? Because those, those lyrics are the hardest ones when you, you've got a concept like that. I remember I did a song for Above and Beyond and it was called Counting Down the Days Since You Last Said That You Loved Me. And it was a true story. I had been counting the days down about an ex. And I, I think I potentially had five songs I was looking at before the one I did the melody on. And then I went, mm, this is the song for this lyric. And it got cut, you know? So yeah. I think that's, it's good. But just always know because then you're giving yourself confidence when you go into the room. If you know you've got a verse idea or loads of titles or, or just ideas of anything in general, you've got this here. It's a safety net. Yeah. I'm completely the yeah. other way, B. I'm so the other way. I don't come in with anything. I don't come in with anything. I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to do anything in the room. I'm like, I don't have oh a title. I don't have anything. And I just wow. the Chancer, like I call it the download. Like, as soon as that's my pick, it but comes. Nothing. You was a great woman. You was a warrior. Oh, warrior, my oh, sister. I've tried it that way. By the way, but it doesn't work for me, so I just know the other way. I was going to say, people don't know, but we ended up what? doing like a television what? show oh, singing oh. together, didn't we, Michelle? Oh. It was good. <laughs> uh, we got another question from Calvin Smith. Regardless of COVID, do you think with songwriting you found your rituals and process and stick to them? Or are you prone to always trying something new and getting out of your comfort zone? Where do you find your best results? Does it always depend on the moment? It's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it depends. Um, you have your rituals. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you have your rituals that you do that you kind of stick to. But I'm a kind of person. I'm always trying to like better myself. Like I hate it that my if my th if every if I read if I start to realize that things are starting to sound the same, it like really gets to me. So I'm always constantly just trying to like you know do something fresh or like trying to break a routine. I don't ever want to be stuck in the same. I mean, it's easy to do that. You can make the same beats, make the same vibes, you know what I'm saying? Just follow whatever's happening in the charts. I know a lot of uh, people who do that as well. They're just constantly just like, whatever's happening in charts, they just make the same house beats and everything sounds the same, but I'm always trying to break out of it. So- um, You're not gonna be innovative though, Sky, are you? Because at the end of the day, you've got to think, when we're copying, if you copy music, that is, you've got like eight months to a year before it's going to potentially be released. Although obviously COVID is making it a little yeah. different and Spotify, we can get things out faster. But you're chasing a trend. You're not being innovative. I would rather be the one who takes the risk and fails miserably. But then, you know what, you'll get a bigger song. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And like, the, it's always the, the songs that where I've been more brave and daring yeah. are the, yeah. my biggest songs. I think I think um, one of my rituals that I've def mm. I definitely, regardless of anything, stick with is I, I call it cutting the fat. So uh, kind of like what you were saying as well, Rihanna. It's like you get everything out without judgment, 
and then you just pair it all back um, melodically and lyrically. Mm. I, I will take things out of the track, cut sections, um, and look at where um, I, I I like to look at it or getting to the point as quickly as possible with as little words as possible. Mm. So that's when you hear it, it's in. Um, and I call that. Like, did you hear the Nashville thing as well, Michelle? I'm curious. Do you do like that concept where? <laughs> see, I don't like to give my game away too much about yeah. the chorus. And I leave my concept for my chorus. Which Nashville thing, yeah, a little uh, but bit. I like little do you bit. do that? I, as well? that um, I look, I, I'm a foodie, so I kind of look at my my songs as food. So like the chorus is like you know the meat, the main meal, and then you know the, the verse is like entrees. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm crazy like that, but I, I like to build it up to the chorus. It's like every time you get to the chorus, this is the payoff. This is. This is your meat. This is your meat and bones. This is your meat and gravy right now. You're, that's what you need. Mm. So I kind of always yeah, look at yeah, it yeah. that way. The verse is telling the story, um, setting it up for this mm. mm. I've, I've had to write with videos in mind. So I always think of it like a blank canvas. I like yeah. to paint pictures with words. Yeah. That's how I, I like to work. So I like to very visual that you'd almost imagine a video in your head yeah. when you're seeing the lyrics. Um, yeah, cool. the cutting the fat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I like yeah. the gristle yeah. unless you want the gristle. But the stack, you know, right? cut off the gristle. Just got the good meat. It's all good. Mm. And a bit of gravy. Mm. Um, I think also uh, like in terms of, I mean, because I'm coming from a producer uh, point of view. I do, I mean, I, I do have like a little ritual that I do, which is um, I kind of just tend to just throw stuff in. Like, I don't really think of like the, yeah. the arrangement of everything, I, whatever sounds good. And then I start like you do, start cutting the fat and then just start like, you know, taking stuff out, whatever. But it's always the same process. Just start with a basic idea and just keep building, keep building, adding sounds, adding people say, you know, adding too much. I'm like, don't worry, I don't. Yeah. it's all gonna make sense at some point. You know what I'm saying? Then you'd be like, oh, wow, okay, I get it. And then you take that out and then you start arranging the verses and everything. But chorus is key. No matter what you do, the chorus always yeah. has to be fantastic. If the chorus is fantastic, you won. Everything else yeah. can be yeah, yeah. fixed. I don't, I don't really have a, a process. I think, um, I think like each, each artist, you know, kind of has a different kind of style, has got something different to say. And also, like, I've, I'm always quite aware of, like, not trying to repeat myself in sessions. Like, so I, I, I'm definitely, like, you know, in that world of always trying to, like, what you were saying, Sky, like, always trying to better yourself. Yeah. Um, but, like, I, I do yeah. think that sometimes, like, also as a, as a producer, like, sometimes I work um, in a session, like, more predominantly, like, as a, as a producer. But sometimes it's just me. So and then I'll also be another writer in the room and an artist. Or sometimes it will just be me and an artist. And I always find that those two processes like can be so so different as well. Like if it's just me and an artist, it might be like cool. Let's go to the piano, pick up a guitar, and just write a song, you know. And then we might then bring it into the computer, yeah. Yeah. like and start putting in some production ideas. Or sometimes it just starts with production, like you know, and and that can happen if there's like another writer in the room. Um, so I think just it really does vary with whatever the kind of artist you're working with but i would say but you know yeah you know for anyone kind of you know like watch it i don't know but like i would definitely um like do do your homework on whoever you whoever's coming to your session um uh, and but also and also sorry i just like go off on a little tangent but like you know to find out kind of how they usually what is usually the artist process i like to do that as well like be like oh cool, how do you normally write a song and if they're like oh i normally kind of pick up a guitar so i'm like cool let's not pick up a guitar, let's do something completely different. Like sometimes it's nice to get the artist out of their comfort zone as well. And to create something that they kind of haven't maybe done before. And then they get excited. And then Matt can kind of really like change the vibe of the room and like very excited, you get excited. And then it's like, oh, okay, this is different. Let's let's try this, let's try that. You know, mm. that, that can sometimes yeah. just. 100%, and go back, going back to what you said about like, um making sure you know, do your homework on what yeah. artists you're going to work with. Like, up, um, what was a few, a couple months ago at a session, 
with a rapper. And um, luckily, like the day before I thought to my, because usually I make stuff on the spot, you know what I'm saying? Whenever I'm in the room, you know, let's go and I start creating whatever. But for this one, I thought, hmm, let me make sure, just in case. I did like five different like ideas of beats, whatever, got into the studio and the artist, oh, I'm so happy to meet you, this and that, you know, I heard so much about you, I'm so excited. And then I didn't realize that our, the, the rapper was expecting finished beats, yeah. you know, because I was never like, you know, anyways, I had like five beats. I started from the first one and like was no reaction, <laughs> second, third, fourth, and just at the fifth one, you're like, whoa, and I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah, I like working my way up and then I, but from then on, ever since then, I just prepared like for rappers, whatever. Always make sure, cause they, you know, a lot of people, they get sent beats yeah. all the time, like constantly beat, beat makers are sending, hey, dude, help my beat, you know, so they expect to fit, like most of it to be finished. So well, that kind of like taught me. Um, that, that's what I'm saying about weighing up the session because, and how you write the writing process, because some music yeah. is more vibe driven, yeah. isn't it? Like if you were going to write a dance song, I think it would be hard to, to do that. Not impossible. But if Started on a not gonna be quite the same <laughs> if you started on a flute or something. <laughs> uh Vax got asked, what software or hardware have you come across this year that you've fallen in love with? Well, I and I I'm endorsed with Melodyne and I I, I even if I wasn't I'd still be the biggest advocate of it. I absolutely think it's the most essential tool in the studio. You can tune, everybody needs to be tuned. Everything needs mm. tuning and lining in places. That's just a fact. Because And the reason for this is, someone explained it to me, and I thought this was such a great way of explaining it. In the olden days, there used to be uh, live instruments, which gave you a natural fluctuation of pitching. So it, it made it natural. But where everything right. is digital now and so perfect, your vocal almost has to be like a, a a digital sound like that. You know what I mean? Obviously not because we like analog, but it's warmer. But I think to do that and to get like the most naturally tuned vocal, Melodyne, personally for me, is amazing. And Sound mm. Toys, um, Alter Boy. Mm, I just Captain. got Alter Boy the other day, a couple of days ago. Yeah. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's like, whenever they pitch, I'm like, how is your pitch? Because I, I, I used to use Melodyne, yeah. not Melodyne, yeah. Autotune. And I realize all to yeah. all to voice resonance is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And, sound, and vocal synth as well. Oh, yeah, that for, for, uh, that. for thing, what you call for vocoder, right? Yeah, but I can't talk about production. I am, stuff yeah, I, I uh, yeah. hard hardware wise, yeah. like recently I was kind of splashed out on a um on an Eve ten seventy three, which was I've been after for like a really long time. So that that's just been like a really nice um yeah, like having used them in commercial studios, just like I, I don't know, like there's just something about them, like the tone that you get <laughs> with vocals, but especially with bass as well. Like it just, you know, it does something to the low end, like get really nice controlled, like you know, rounded low end, which I love. So that's one piece of hardware that I've kind of uh slashed out on this year. In terms of software, um, someone introduced me to a piece of software by Oak Sound called Soothe 2 which is um, essentially just, um, you know, use it on vocals. And what it does is it essentially just kind of like takes out harshness uh, on vocals, especially if you're working with like um, vocalists that have like, maybe like, you know, um, kind of like quite like, you know, nasal tones, like anything around that, that kind of harsh 2K mark. It just kind of helps just really smooth those out, but it doesn't compromise like the brightness. It's a, it's a absolutely fabulous plug-in like mm. and yeah so that's been like a, a real kind of uh yeah just when it comes to like vocal production like mixing um it's just saved me like hours so i definitely would recommend that one someone mm. yeah thank you to, for producing that. Yeah, it was good like um what's it called i found out about that plugin when i was in uh, last time i was in la i was working with will i dap he did that song, you know, um, oh, yeah. Am I Wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, remember, I, remember, I remember listening to that song. I remember listening to that song and the guitar just sounded so good. I was like, what? So I asked him, because he produced it. I was like, dude, what's, what did you put on your guitar? And he showed me. I was like, wow. So, yeah, that's a great plug. So it takes up a lot of CPU, though. Yeah. You can't use it too much. 
What's your favourite reverb? What's your favourite reverb plugin that you're oh, using? Me? Uh, yeah. I use um, Toro Verb. Mm. Got like a real, Never used yeah, it. it's from D sixteen, I think. It's really nice. There's like a, there's one. Um, I think it's the first setting that comes on. It's just got a really nice holly reverb. It's got a really nice tail to, um, on that one. And another plugin nice. that's really good. What I found it's output um, thermal. Oh, you guys no, that yet? no. no. It's a distortion mm. plugin. It's amazing. I use it on everything. I just chuck it on. The whole thing. <laughs> well, you, know, you, can, you can control the distortion and it doesn't like sound yeah. off. It sounds great. Mm -hmm. Everything you put in there just sounds amazing. Nice. So, uh, nice. Okay. Um, let's see. That's, okay. Here's a question for Sky from Joshua Gray. Sky, on the track, Boss B, did you actively encourage Doja to show mm -hmm. her personality character on the mm -hmm. vocal or this, or did it just happen naturally? Ah, that was nice. They actually didn't work with her in the studio. They oh, sent me her vocals. Oh, okay. The track was already done, and then they sent, like, the A&R was like, I'm going to get Doja Cat on this. I'm like, oh, wow, what? Back then, like, I didn't even know who she was. That's before Say So Blow Up, like, just before. And as she came back with her second verse, it was just fire. I'm like, <laughs> who the hell is this? Cool, yeah. But, yeah, now she did it all. Okay. Stuff, man. She's amazing. Incredible. All right. Can I put a question from the right? Because there's a brilliant the bottom one. Or the top. From Theo Nachos. What markets have you guys transitioned to in the time of the pandemic since live music has come to a halt? And where can musicians earn the living best in the current situation? This is exactly what I've been focusing on. So I have switched myself into K-pop and because... Quite honestly, you can still make millions doing, like anyone who's not doing in the pop world, I don't understand why anyone's kind of like not running over there to BTS and, and Blackpink. Like, it's like, that's where the money is. All the Americans are already making that jump. So I would say K-pop, um, like No End or uh, J-pop and the chi China market, yeah. and also Sync. Like the like that world is a brilliant place. I, you know, when I think of what we've just got for this advert, and don't get me wrong, I feel so incredibly blessed. I'm still making a living from the music solely, and that's all I do. I don't have another job, so I, I feel so very blessed right now. When you think the streaming's paying fight, like it's it's so bad, so bad. It's like what is it? Something that's five pound a million. Not quite or that bad. <laughs> It's pretty much on that. It's point zero zero three four, and when you think that you can, what you can earn from sync music, um, even if you're like working on a piece, even if it's just like five hundred pound, even if it's a thousand guys, look at look at these ways. If you can do library music, I can't because I, I don't produce, but you could be making a really good living from doing that, you know, and, and running that alongside. Wayne Hector had a conversation with me who is the most incredible, insane, I dread to think how many hits that man has written. But Wayne turned around and said to me this years ago, and I've never, ever forgotten this piece of advice. He said, split your career into three things. Chase mm -hmm. the cuts that you want to go with the big artists. Work with the artists, the new up and coming one. And then three, do whatever you want. And I and I really do believe that mm. that you should. That's a good Chase way the to cut, work. Work with the up and coming, and then do whatever you want. That's good. <laughs> yeah, because the new the next generation, they'll be that you're there. It all boils running. down to really like how much work you would put mm. into it, though, too. Because I know a lot of people who are like, I don't have any time to like you know, like I do. That's exactly what you know. Is like you hit the nail on the mm. head. That's exactly what I do. I. Work with the new artists. Uh, what was the uh, second one? Work cops. with the new artists and do what the hell they want. You know what I'm saying? But in order to do that, you have to like plan everything and just like make sure. You know, you have to find the time. You know, that's why like get up earlier. And you know, rather than doing late nights and like like just your game plan to be able to do that. Like I said, it's hard to it's hard to pursue your dream when reality and like you know, especially first starting out. Anyway, for the first seven eight years of my 
when I started as a preacher, I started when I was 21, 22. I didn't make no money. I was like broke. You know, I was I was hanging up just about. And like, you know, always thinking like, when is it going to be the day? When is it going to be the day? And like eventually things started to happen. You know what I'm saying? But it was just like the staying power. No matter what happened, every year I'd go back home. And my, like my family would be like, oh, you still do music. You know, what do you, what do, you do with your life? You know, every year. <laughs> Next year I'm going to make it. And then like it got to a point, my sister was like, I don't want to hear it. You say it every year. Like, just stop talking about it. And then bam. Now it's like, well, you're doing well. Yeah, I am doing well. You know, <laughs> never stop believing. And no matter what, there was no plan B. It was always plan A. No matter what happened. No plan B. Yeah. That's, that's the attitude you have to have. have. No matter what happens, have, this is going to happen. Exactly. You know, and. Uh, I, God loves the snow sky, isn't it? Yeah. Hard work pays off. And being honest, like we mentioned this earlier, like I think when you're writing a song, you've got to be really honest. Is that the best you could have made that? Are you bringing your A game? Mm. I learned that from LA. You have to bring your A game to the studio every single time. Hard work. I am still, Mm. like yesterday, I worked till like 11. And some nights I just got um, three cuts on a Columbia uh, record in um, uh, Columbia Records on a, a girl band. And I literally was working till three, four o'clock in oh, the yeah, morning. Megan, Megan, Megan Cotton was doing the same because she did one of the sessions with us. We were literally working till five o'clock in the morning mm. because you know what? No. Be prepared. If you want this, this isn't an easy ride. This mm. is going to be Painful. hard work. Painful. And that's why you have to love it. But it's work. Because when, it. when, when you're tired and it's like, mm. What I've got to get up again and go in the studio and write again. And, and yeah, yeah. Like, I got to for the there. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to make it through this week. I can't make it food. And then you got like, you know, whatever. You got to pay the rent. Yeah. And all these things. Get a real job. Why don't you get a job yeah. here for being? Get you back on your feet. That was it. You know what? Yeah. When I left my yeah. first management, you know, they were freaking horrible people. <laughs> but, anyways, I remember like I left with nothing. And I remember like that time it was like, get a job. At um, what was it? Anywhere, you know, I'm just to like sustain myself or just carry on pursuing. Just at the, you know, think on my feet. I was like, cool, like studio hopping. You know, what I'm saying doing sessions, doing little bits of work for people here. You know, it was that for like a whole year before I signed my publishing deal. But you know, just like I said, just being able to adapt. Just like I know a lot of producers before the pandemic when it started, like four or five months came out of it. I had more work in the pandemic than I had before the pandemic. You know, what I'm saying. I watched I watched a video. It was some guy was like it was on Facebook when the first day of the pandemic or something. It was on I think it was Instagram. He was like, so right now he's like, you should double your workload and find new ways to work. You know, and I was listening, I was thinking, yeah, he's right. And all of a sudden everyone was like, What's happening? Zoom session, LA, let's go. Bam, 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 bam. And I came out, and I remember a few producers like they're like, Hey man, I'm like, hey, what's up, bro? He's like, Yeah, I haven't I haven't worked for like four months. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what? He was like, did you all on your timeline? I don't know if you know your videos. Did you all have on your timeline in your videos on like Instagram and stuff? I had that video of Boyd in the house, Boyd, Boyd, everybody I, laying on beds, I mean, like singing these big songs. This Boyd in the house. So, oh my god, I had so many people of my in my like my circle that doing it, and that at that point made me go, I am not going to yeah. come out of this COVID with a year i am not i'm gonna yeah. work twice as hard i'm gonna come out achieving 100%. from this year okay. and and yeah and i yeah. was like you did the same sky yeah. i'm busier now and per- 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 what about you you the same oh you know so obviously the, the first because it was also that was i started working on the kyle album just before the pandemic hit and i remember like a week into it like my wife um she was like yeah so have you texted her like to see what's going on you know so I texted him, like, what's happening? She's like, oh, just doing some Zoom sessions, this and that. Anyway, we found ways to record her via Zoom, you know, through TeamViewer. And then she had, she had to get up at home. And then we were writing with this whole new way. We finished the album on Zoom, which is crazy. You know what I'm saying? She was doing was logic and everything. She sent me vocal takes back. I'm like, holy shit, like, Kylie sent me vocal takes. And she's recording herself. You know, it's crazy. But now she now, she, now she's got... You no, know, she's she's got skills that she's got for for the rest of her life. She can now record her own stuff. So you know, which is let amazing. me let me jump onto that. We we got about three minutes. What has been the greatest skill that you have learned through this time 
that you're going to carry forward? Ooh, um, for me, and I think just just to very quickly touch on kind of like, you know, everyone's saying about like being really busy and working really, really hard, which I agree with. And like what you said, Victoria, like it is hard work and it is a slog and you've got to love it. You've got to really, really, really love it. But one thing that I've learned, like before COVID hit, like running like 100 like miles an hour and then everything just kind of stopping and like everything kind of shutting down, just having a bit more time. It's actually made me realise actually just how important it is just to look after yourself and your mental health. And actually like, you know, I wasn't quite aware of just having a bit of burnout, which, you know, so I think if there's one thing that I've learned, it's work hard, which yeah, it's important, but also just to just check in with yourself and just make sure that you're just, that you're not, you know, just, just, don't get burnout basically um, mm. and you can work, but it's also working smarter not just working harder that's so really that's definitely what i've taken away from from covid yeah 100 i agree with what you're saying also just being able I, one thing i've learned is that i can i don't need to always work at the studio i can work from different places because of technology today like i said with zoom it's open a whole new world which means you know yeah yeah i can adapt Gloria? Awesome. Yeah. I've learned to be more resourceful. Um, I've also learned, obviously, to do very good productions, vocal productions, and mixing. I've been getting really into vocal mixing. That's my new thing. And what else? Uh, yeah, just learning about and being more mindful of what's actually, just instead of chasing and running blindly, I've like everybody, I took a stop. And then I sat down and I make lists. I make lists constantly. Okay, what am I going to do? What do I want to achieve? How, how do I get that? So if you want to get to an A&R, think about how you're going to do that. If you want to get to an artist, really think about that. If you want to work with someone. So and make notes on all of that stuff. And for my mindfulness, I what? started doing Qigong. Oh, okay. Qigong, Chinese self-healing. <laughs> Lucy Brindle on Instagram and Facebook offers a free class at eight o'clock every morning. Pretty <laughs> fantastic. Any, any last thing that you want to share um, before we go? Oh, my, my new skill that I learned, oh. I learned to um, do videos, to edit videos and put videos together. Um, I've been learning all about promoing stuff as well. But yeah, I definitely, but the video thing, and Ooh. it just came out, it came by accident. It was like, I really want to do this track. I really want to put it out. My husband was just like, we'll do it then. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> um, so I was at iMovie and just put images together yeah, for the music. Too, and amazing. just, yeah, and I and I loved it. And that's my new thing now. Uh, and I'll be carrying that forward. And I just did my very first remix. Which, ah, this is Ooh. life is hard, man. Girl. It was yeah, my husband would not help me. My husband's wow. a producer and a mix engineer, and he was just like, you're going to have to do it yourself. He just opened up the stuff and he's like, put your sound, put your beat, put it together, and I'm like, oh, my God. You guys work hard. Uh, hats off. Hats off to producers, man. But, yeah. Before, uh, but, uh, any last, uh, any last mm -hmm. advice? Yeah, I've just... Um, yeah. On. I've got no, one. Go on, go Victoria. Go on, go on, go on. It's right. <laughs> I've got. I would, so I've got the first. Okay. Melody pockets. Remember this one. Remember to. I always tell people when I do master classes: slice through the beat. Make sure your melodies are going through the beat. Don't. And also, if you've got a pocket that's going, ba -ba 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 -ba, don't go into the next section. Go. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Do a long note. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And then you feel that rug pull. I call it the rug. Always alternate your tip. vocal pocket patterns that you're doing. That's um, also, my tip one today. tip, one thing I learned. This is what quite a while back, and I would never, never, always, never forgot this. It's not, it's not about who you know; it's what you do with who you know. That's, that's so, yes. so it's all about, it's yes. all good. It's all good, like you know, being talented and like being able to do whatever you do. But if you don't know the right people, it's never like gonna yeah. get heard by the right people. So you gotta absolutely hit up people. And broaden your network connection because that's the most important thing. Yeah, I just, uh, I just really quickly wanted to do um, a little plug uh, for the Music Producers Guild for the MPG. Um, 
just for any uh, writers and producers, I know this has been predominantly on songwriting, um, and I know the, the Music Producers Guild has always been predominantly seen as a home for producers and engineers. However, we are, um, you know, we are having more members joining but our writers producers. Um, and we do actually have that we've launched a, um, a brand new award at the MPG Awards, which is the Writer Producer Award, which essentially recognises those which are writing and producing, which um, seems to be a way that, you know, a lot of kind of records are, are being made now. So, yeah, if you don't know much about the MPG, go go check it out. Um, you know, it is free to join. So, um, you know, um, you can become part of our, our little kind of you know, collective. So, yeah, there you go. Thank you. This has been brilliant. Thanks, everybody. And thanks for Resonate for inviting me. And yeah, it's been great, Sky. I'm yeah. really glad to be here. Can I just say it's also it's been like super inspiring. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like thank you, thank you guys. It's been it's been really good fun. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank Cheers, you so guys. much. Oh, Michelle, Michelle, no, it's Nigerian. He's a nice guy. Good boy. <laughs> okay great uh, i think we need to wrap up now but thank you so much to all our panelists that was a really amazing insightful discussion and um, thank you for our attendees for watching as well um we've got to be 15 minute or 10 minute break now uh, i'll be in innovation nation with physicians union in 10 minutes but if you head to the reception page you can see the schedule and decide where you want to go next uh, in the meantime, you can check out the networking and our expo booths, and I'll see you there. So, thank you. See you later. Oh, we stuck here. Lee. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye